Hi again everybody and welcome back to another Halloween product review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the six foot animated talking grim reaper. This is a spooky village product. It retailed for $49.99 at the CVS store last uh, Halloween. I purchased it at the after Halloween clearance sales for 50% off so I paid about $25 for it. which. I have had some of their products in the past and I've been pretty happy with them, but they retailed at the price point of about $90, I think they were. And that was the um, six foot skeleton pirate and the um, headless horseman. And I really like those products. I thought they were very creepy looking and they did a good job um, as atmosphere. I tend to not use these things for the actual animatronic effects. I'm not sure. I don't think they just, they don't work that well in my opinion. But we're going to see how this works at the $49.99 price point, roughly half price of those items. So I'm a little skeptical on the quality of this one, but we'll see. We'll open it up. I say this as if I have never opened this box before, but I actually did um, put this guy together last night. I made you a video. Here's a pro tip. If you are making a YouTube video, make sure that you save your... Uh, files before deleting them. So I did not do that. So this is our second time around putting this creepy guy together. Um, inside the box doesn't come with any sort of wrapping or anything. It's just the guy and his instructions. He kind of looks like an alien to me. Now when I first took this out, um, this eye had popped out. Um, it was just laying loose in the box. Um, it's just a big plastic um, piece that glows when he is working. I ended up having to hot glue it back on, but it worked. Comes with some instructions. Fortunately, we'll save some time since I've already looked through those. Got the body piece here. Take a closer look at that in a second. We've got some foot pieces. Now, this foot um, is detached. It has little nubbins on the bottom piece and this one just happens to be broken off. Um, the nubbin sort of pops into the foot and holds it into place there. Suppose I can hot glue it. Um, I was even thinking maybe just sticking a paper clip in there sticking up so I can stick the foot on and it just won't move around, you know. Project for another time though. The other foot stay. Some body pieces, a hip piece. And lastly, the side for his Grim Reaperness. I guess I should have looked at the box a little closer with you just to give you kind of an overview of what it is. Um, again, it's an animatronic, animatronic talking Grim Reaper. Well, actually, it's animated Grim Reaper, I should be calling it. It's sound activated, it's battery operated, it requires three AA batteries, which surprisingly are included with purchase. So. That's a nice little bonus. Um, it's recommended for indoor use. It does have a bunch of warnings on the back, um, primarily about the batteries, all this discussing batteries. Um, but basically they say, you know, don't mix the old and the new and you should replace the batteries when you get them because I guess they intend for a lot of these to be just store displays and it actually says that those batteries inside are intended for store use and you should replace them. So let's go ahead and assemble this guy. He is pretty easy to assemble. Sorry about that. We just take his feet, throw him on the ground. His body pieces, body pieces, um, are all, you know, they're metal. They're con um, it's very well constructed, I think. You just, you know, snap them together. It's easier to do both before you snap the side piece in, so. It's just got those little pop-up tabs that click into place. So you just construct the base. There we go, this foot is really bothering me. Let's scoot back, make sure you can see that in the video. All right, then we've got a few more pieces here. All right, I'm just going to build him up. He does stand six feet tall, so you got a lot of these to pop into place to give him that height. His hip piece, 
This always confused me. I think I looked at the directions for quite a long time before noticing which direction that hip is supposed to bend. Um, and it is supposed to bend toward the back. Um, it doesn't say that specifically, but there is a separate little diagram that I just have never noticed. Now this one's giving me a little difficulty because it doesn't line up with the hole on either side. Now, when I assembled it yesterday, I couldn't get one side in the hole at all. It just barely is missing. It's barely off center. But one of them worked, but today, neither of them want to go into place. But regardless, it'll sit there whether it pops into place or not. Then we've got the torso piece. Goes in one way there. And let that snap into place. Okay. In the torso piece you have at the top, it's not one of these snap pieces. It's just got two little nubbins that stick out. You probably can't see that from that far back, but that's what's going to hold the body into place. Let's go ahead and unfurl him. The arms are poseable and bendable. It's got a very long robe and a hood, which we're gonna stick the head right through. Actually, let me just lift up the robe. Oh, one thing to notice on the back, there is a Velcro, um, <clears throat> Velcro flap here, and if you open it, you can see the mechanism in the back. So there's the battery hole, battery compartment. <laughs> Um, in the back, it has a switch here for the demo mode and off and on. And when it's in the on position, it'll be sound activated. So we'll just cover that back up. Now this material feels very flimsy. I mean, you can practically see right through it. It looks like the Velcro um, piece here is already kind of detaching from the material. So you probably don't want to be opening that flap more than you possibly need to. It doesn't seem to be very sturdy at all. But let's go ahead and find the base. Here you can see just how it slides on to the torso piece. Um, you've got some slits cut in this bracket pipe thing. The slits are gonna slide right over those nubbins to hold it into place. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, there we go. Just let the robe come back down really have to do something about that foot. But I have noticed, actually, as I was playing with it the other day, the robe tends to cover the feet a lot, so you kind of miss that detail. It would be nice if these were pushed out a little more, but, you know, they sort of run, um, are connected with the pipe, so there's not really much you can do. I suppose you could take it all the way off and just maybe move it forward and hot glue it so the feet are a little more showing, but... Or you could just leave it as it is. <laughs> So let's go ahead and put the headpiece on. I'm pulling back here. Again, you probably can't see it, but there is a little, another little holder piece for the head. The head is able to move with this little bendy piece here, and it just sort of slides right into this hole. Now, I had a great deal of difficulty yesterday getting that to go in. It seems to just slide right in today, and that's nice. Probably because when I had to take it apart to put it back in the box, and that was a nightmare. Just getting it back out took a lot of effort. But we're just going to connect the wires from the headpiece to the battery compartment. Tuck that back into place. You'll see on the bottom of the head, we have a piece of Velcro. There's one on his robe here as well. So you just Velcro his robe to the bottom of his chin there. There's another piece on his head that you Velcro his hood into place. So his weird alien-like head will stay covered. Another little piece of fabric there. Let me just sit him back straight up. All right, so there we go. Just sort of adjust his veil type thing there. The only thing left to do now is put together the side. It's very easy. Now, these black pi um, pipe pieces are just plastic, not the heavy metal like his body. 
and they just sort of slide together. Some of them, I've noticed, are a lot better than others. Maybe that's supposed to be the end piece. So they should just pop together. Now, I did notice from working on this yesterday, it's probably best to do this in two pieces because what we have to do, now why is that? Oh, this must be the bottom piece, okay. No, that doesn't make sense either. I don't know. The instructions aren't that helpful with this either. Um, but anyway, you have to slide the side through this little hole in his hand. So it's kind of easier if you just leave it in two parts first until you get that in. And I have definitely done something wrong here. Because one of these just has two holes, it doesn't have the connector bit. So I'm assuming then this piece, yep, belongs on the end side piece. So let's go ahead and pop that on there. Again, it leaves a little bit of a gap. I don't know why it keeps doing that. It doesn't want to pop all the way into place. But push that down a little bit. Put this end bit on. And it's kind of hard to keep in place, but if you put it on the little nub in at the bottom, I think that placement you know, keeps it in place so it's not wobbling all around because his hand you know, kind of moves pretty freely. You can bend it. This guy points like you. I'm going to come for you. So that's kind of cool. There we go. Let's go ahead and press the button so you can see what he says. Now, if you listen to that closely, as I have several times, he actually says, welcome, I've been waiting for you, I am the grave digger, or something, I've already forgotten exactly what it says, but I don't know if they have just put in the wrong audio for this um, item or not. Let's listen to it again. So he definitely says, I'm the grave digger. And it seems to only repeat that phrase when I press the hand button. But when we change him to sound activated, which I'll do for you here real quick, I've noticed he does have another phrase. it in a nutshell. I don't know if you could understand what he said in that last bit, but when we have him on the sound activated, you know, he definitely says some more um, items. It's all about graves and grave digging and, and so forth. So that's a little disappointing. I don't know why he would call himself a grave digger when he's a grim reaper. But, you know, again, I don't like using the audio. I like him, you know, just for atmosphere. And for 25 bucks that I paid for him, you know, I'll stick him somewhere in a corner and he'll look just fine. And kind of lose his feet detail, but what I kind of do, you know, let me just demonstrate with this piece of creepy cloth. I usually just take creepy cloth too and you drape it around the base of these things. It hides the, uh, you know, the stands makes them disappear and maybe I'll put like a couple of plastic 
skulls down there to you know jazz it up a little bit make him a little spookier um, but overall I mean he is very tall I'm six three six four so he's definitely a good six feet tall I'm not too sure about his face doesn't look you know too skeleton like to me as I would picture a Grim Reaper he definitely looks like an alien to me maybe it's just the green I don't know and I can't stand the sound the sound is way too loud it goes on way too long. It doesn't make sense with, you know, talking about being a grave digger. And they have a lot of background noise. I don't know if you could hear it very closely, but there's definitely some, like, horse galloping in there. Um, and just, you know, that's not necessary. I think they should have just stuck with audio, uh, make him just say words. And, you know, I can rely on my own background sounds and music for my Halloween display. I don't need him to add more to that. But... That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, I can see why they priced him $49.99. I don't think he's that quality of a piece. I mean, there's not much to him. I mean, when you compare him to the other products at the higher $90 price point, I mean, they've got usually a little more detail to them. So, you know, this is cheap fabric. He just has a head and arms and, you know, a side that you can get at a Halloween store for, you know, a couple bucks. So, I guess for... $49.99, that's probably about the right price point. But I wouldn't say I would recommend him. I don't like him that much, really. But he'll be good in part of a display as background. Anyway, that's it. Um, let me know what you think of him. If you can understand what he's saying, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll be reviewing some other Halloween products I purchased last year. Some more DIY projects on the horizon as well. So if you want to Keep up with those. Be sure to like and subscribe this video, and I'll see you around. Happy haunting.